Hello and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. So today we are going to be talking about the Henley level system, but I want to back up a little bit. So sometimes you'll hear people in piano say, I have my grade eight in piano or my playing ability is at a grade three level. And when people say these things, they're almost always going to be referring to the Royal Conservatory of Music or the ABRSM, so the RCM or the ABRSM as the major schools of music that classify all classical music into different grades. So as a self-taught piano student, or even just someone who takes lessons with a teacher, but just wants a little bit more depth of information on what, what they're studying. I think it's really, really useful to have an understanding of grades in piano because it gives you a sense of what music you can play, what's too difficult and what's at your level and so on and so on. So when the Henley level system was brought to my attention, I was really curious about it because the more information, the better. So I looked into it and it's a great system and I want to show you the ins and outs to, about it today and talk about why I think it's so useful, why you should care, all that good stuff. I also apologize for not remembering. It was one of you who commented and told me about this and I completely forget who it was. I didn't mark it down. So if you're watching this video and you're the one who told me to look into the Henley system, leave a comment. I will give you credit for it. And anyway, let's get this video started. So let's start with the big question. Who is Henley? And why should we even care about the Henley system at all? In 1948, there was a German man named Gunther Henley who started a now really famous music publishing house. The publishing house is Henley. The whole aim of Henley was to publish music that was as close to the composer's original intention as possible with minimal meddling and editing. And we call this urtext. You'd recognize these books by their cover right away. Like if you've been to any music bookstore or if you're like any, even just like a casual collector of music, these Henley books are, they're like always in the, you know, ubiquitous shade of blue and they're really high quality. Their binding is excellent. Like even if you have a huge book like this, it kind of lays flat the, um, the printing pages and the like ink and stuff is all super high quality. They also cost a premium, so that's something to take into consideration, but the editing is also really reliable. So Henley has basically always been a family business, and it's currently being run by Felix Henley, who is the grandson of the original Gunther Henley. Okay, so that's Henley, the man himself, but what about the Henley level system? In 2010, they asked a man named Rolf Conan to rank a huge amount of classical music by its level of difficulty. Now, Rolf himself is a renowned pianist, musician, and professor, and he also knew some Henley editors personally, so that, coupled with his qualifications, is likely why he was given this huge task. So the next part to that question is, why should I care? So put simply, it's just another way for musicians to find new and level appropriate music to learn. It helps you get a sense of what constitutes easy, intermediate, and advanced music. If you're interested in sight reading, which you should be, everyone should sight read, it'll help you find easier pieces kind of a little bit below your level. And it can help you find more challenging, but not like too challenging, uh, pieces that you can learn as stretch goals. So if you find yourself wondering what you should be learning, or you just feel like you're floating in a sea of random random music choices, I think you'll find a lot of value out of the Henley level system. What I like about it is its ease of use. Basically, any important musical work between the Baroque and 20th century can be found in their library. And it gets incredibly specific. So instead of labeling an entire book at a certain level, like the well-tempered clavier, just kind of having like a blanket rating of say level five, each individual prelude and fugue has its own level. We have the first prelude is level two, but then the fugue is level six and so on. Where the Henley system differs from the RCM and ABRSM is that it only focuses and levels classical music. So if you're flipping through the RCM syllabus, you'll see graded classical pieces, but you'll also see really super modern pieces that are also graded. It's very um, well-rounded in that sense. But Henley focuses just on one thing, so music between the Baroque and early 20th century. And that laser-like focus, I actually think, is one of their greatest strengths in publishing. So now let's talk about how to use the Henley level system and how it all works. There are three broad categories of pieces. You have easy pieces, medium, and difficult. And within each of those categories, there are three separate levels. So level one, two, and three are all considered easy, four, five, six, medium, and then seven, eight, nine are considered difficult. And it actually even gets more specific than that. So if you search by level, you'll notice that there are kind of like half levels, like in between levels. So instead of just having pieces labeled level one, level two, level three, you can actually have 
kind of like 1.5. 1 slash 2 is like kind of somewhere between 1 and 2. And it has this for all of the difficulty levels. So let's just look at an example. So if you've explored Henley's level systems before, you might have noticed that I just clicked through level 1 and it's bringing me up with the first result is the notebook for Anna Magdalena Buck, which is a really good one. So I'm going to click that and we'll take a look at it. So it's going to show us every individual piece in the notebook for Anna Magdalena Bach. And we can see that some of them are at a level one and some of them are like level one to two and some are even higher, but they're all basically in a beginner range between one to three. However, what you might have noticed is that minuet in G major and G minor, which we've actually talked about on this channel, both of them, we've done tutorials, are rated level one. But for any of you who have attempted these pieces, they are not beginner pieces. In fact, these are the kind of pieces that you would tackle at a grade three level if you're using the ABRSM or RCM systems. So they're not, you know, you probably want a couple years under your belt before trying these. So this Henley level system doesn't take into account like kind of the, the musical kindergarten stages and that's just something to keep in mind. Level one is not absolute beginner level. Rolf Conan himself gives an excellent explanation on how he determined the levels of difficulty. And he says that of central importance are the complexity of the piece's composition, its rhythmic complexities, the difficulty of reading the text for the first time, and last but not least, how easy or difficult it is to understand the musical structure. And he also goes on to say that his assessment is measured by the ability to prepare a piece for performance. He also notes that it's an entirely subjective thing and, and even though he tried to be as accurate as possible and objective as possible he is just one human so he's open for suggestions. So aside from just searching by level you can also search by instrumentation of which there's a few options you've got like keyboards and strings and stuff like that. You can search by musical period. So if I wanted to check out some impressionist music, it would give me the top impressionism composers like Satie and Debussy. And you can also, of course, search by composer, which is a very, you know, obvious way to do it. The main strength to me of the Henley system is its ability to rank really, really difficult pieces. So I want to give you an example. So a common piece that a lot of people know is the third Liebestrom from list set of three. It's considered ABRSM difficulty according to the RCM. So this is basically university level and it's the second most difficult level that the RCM even has. And if you wanted to go even higher, they have the LRCM, but I don't really know many people who have gone to that point. However, when we go check out Henley and what Henley has to say about the third Liebestrom, which is right here, Olib Solang du Lieben Kunst, I don't know if I pronounced that too well, it's ranked a difficulty level of six to seven. So basically what that means is that there's still three more levels of difficulty higher than that. And it's much more specific than just the one level higher that the RCM can offer. And it gets much more granular. So pieces at an ABRSM or LRCM level can vary like super widely in difficulty, but the Henley system can kind of narrow those difficult pieces down even further. So to sum up, if you're even remotely interested in learning classical type music, you definitely want to check out Henley's level system because it has leveled all of the core repertoire for piano players. It's very specific searchable and user-friendly. It'll help you plot out and chart your learning path, whether or not you have a piano teacher. It'll give you a sense of what is and what isn't achievable based on your current level. It's not affiliated with any grading school or system. The books that Henley publishes are amazing. They're super high quality. And finally, the Henley system and the Henley Publishing House are very reputable and highly respected. And that is all for today's video. If you just go to Henley's website by Googling it, you'll be able to find all of this stuff that we've been featuring on the screen. And I've got the associated blog post linked below for you to check out and you can find links and stuff there as well. So give this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you to all the people who, all you guys who comment and you know share things like this with me that I can then share with uh, more people. And for those of us, or for those of you who help make these videos possible. I'll catch you next time. So put simply, it's just another way for musicians to